Well, howdy, howdy, folks, and welcome back to the channel. Here I am in the old surveillance car, but I'm not doing surveillance today. What I am going to be doing today is what I often refer to as scoundrel hunting. And um, no, I'm not really hunting scoundrels, but we do have um, multiple skips and locates that we are working on today. And I thought you might enjoy going along for the ride. So I'm going to get on the road and I'll get some fuel in the vehicle and then I'll get back to you and let you know about these cases okay okay folks we are on the road here this first one that we're doing is a skip for one of our process serve clients this gentleman um, was in another state he had a construction company and um, he ended up taking a lot of money from our client and not getting the job done so the client would like us to find him now we have been hunting this guy for about a month trying to get him served um, it's definitely going to be one of those deals that we call a difficult serve situation or a difficult serve case um, because we're trying to find him he has lots of fake addresses tied to his name we've gone all over and found um, offices where he was supposed to be officed out of that don't exist, um, addresses out in the country that don't exist, addresses that he has never been associated with in reality. You know, we talked to the owners and we've talked to current residents and things like that. So we have a couple of addresses we're going to be checking on him and seeing if we can find him. One of the things we do have is his vehicles that are registered to him and his license plate number so that's what we're hoping to be able to find and then if we can figure out where he is living or working then we will get a surveillance set up on him and we will actually go out in the morning conduct surveillance and wait for him to leave to go to work or go to his office or go wherever he's going to go and then follow him and nab him at a coffee shop a gas station a stoplight wherever we can so that one's going to be quite interesting and I will let you know when I am on scene at the first address and let you know what we have discovered. Well folks that first address was a bust. I went there, did not see any vehicles associated with the subject that we're looking for. I did knock on a couple of the doors around there and talk to some of the neighbors. Nobody has heard of him. Um, I stopped there because it was the closest one first. Try to save the client a little bit of uh, money in my time and, and mileage as well. Um, the next one is actually in another town. It's about 20-25 minutes away so I will update you when we get there. Well folks as I'm driving over there I thought I would uh, let you know about an interesting case that I had a while back similar to this one and not exactly the same but it was one of those where we had been hunting for this gentleman for um, actually almost three months. He was evading, he had been moving around different towns, um, had even moved in and out of the state. He was really, really hiding. The uh, lawsuits against him were in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he knew that people were searching for him. When I came up with an address that I believed was his, <laughs> um, I went out, of course, doing just like I am today, trying to verify that address. And I have the documents with me when I go out and do these types of cases, just in case I run into the individual, then I'm able to serve them if I see them. And I had multiple addresses to check on that one, and I checked the closest one, and of course he wasn't there, and I wasn't, you know, really thinking he was probably going to be there, but I needed to at least eliminate that one. It was an older address. The second one was a possibility he might be associated, but it was more like it looked like one of his kids were pro probably associated with it. And then the third one, as I rolled up on it, it was in a little cul-de-sac, and as I rolled up, I saw a man standing there on the property line talking to a gentleman at the other um, neighboring property there. And I thought, oh my goodness, this could be my guy. And I looked at my pictures of him, and I always try to find photographs of the individual, and I thought, this, this could be my guy. And uh, one of the things I also do is I have the neighbor's information because I do door knocks 
and I like to know who I'm talking to and stuff like that. So I had the neighbor's information and I believed I knew which neighbor he was talking to. So what I did on that one is I pulled up into, we'll call him Mr. Jones's um, driveway, the neighbor. His name wasn't really Mr. Jones, but we're going to use Mr. Jones and the subject is Mr. Smith. Mr. Jones's driveway was, was uh, free and clear. I could pull right in there and I pulled in and I kind of knew this was probably what was going to happen. As I pulled in, Mr. Jones looked and thought, oh my gosh, what's this guy doing in my driveway? And he started walking over towards me. And I popped out of my car and I said, hi, Mr. Jones. And he was kind of surprised I knew his name. And I kind of explained the situation, but I didn't <laughs> explain it in its entirety. I said, Mr. Jones, I am a professional um, investigator and I am actually looking for an individual, Sarah Smith. And we had information leading us to believe that she may live in this neighborhood and I just wanted to come around and talk with you and some of the other neighbors and see if any of you knew of uh, Sarah Smith. She was a witness to a case and we just need to, you know, ask her a few questions. And he said, well, I don't know uh, Sarah Smith, but um, John Smith is right over here. Um, he's the guy I was just talking to. He moved in here about a year ago. I said, oh, okay. I said, I wonder if he's related. Do you know? And he says, I don't know. And I said, well, um, could you introduce me to him? And he says, absolutely. So we walk over there. And he says, hey, John, John, this is uh, this is John Morris. He's, he's a professional investigator. And he's actually looking for somebody that may be related to you, a Sarah Smith. And I uh, shook his hand. And I said, hi, um, and you're John Smith? And he said, yes, yes, that's me, but I don't know of Sarah Smith. And I said, she's not related to you? And he goes, no, nope, I don't know anybody named, named Sarah Smith. And I already knew this. I had this name just kind of pulled pulled out of my imagination, but I had already done a background on the guy, and I was fairly familiar with his wife and his daughter's name and relatives and friends and stuff like that. And I said, well, maybe you can help me um, to identify her. Can I show you some of this stuff? And he said, oh, yeah, sure. And he steps in a little closer, and I hand him the papers um, with the summons for him to appear in court and some other documents. And I said, okay, Mr. Smith, um, that's a summons for you to appear in court. You have a nice day. And then I walked as quickly as I could back to my car, got in, and drove off. And he was mad. I tell you, he was yelling and screaming obscenities at me the entire way. But I had got it all on my body cam, and uh, the service was complete, and uh, he did end up going to court. There was no way he was going to be able to deny it, because I also had a witness, the neighbor there, to, uh, to the event. So I just thought you might enjoy that one. Hopefully these aren't as exciting as that. Um, those don't happen all the time. Once or twice a year I get a really exciting one like that. Um, that one was fun because we had spent so much time looking for the guy and it was good to finally catch him while we were out scoundrel hunting like we are today and get him the documents. So I am still about um, five minutes out to this next address and I will uh, let you know what I find out when I get there, okay? Well, folks, that was a little bit interesting to say the least. Let me get my uh, camera straightened out here. Um, our subject is not at this residence, I can tell you that, but when I rolled up, there was a vehicle I believed possibly associated or remotely associated with our subject. Um, the vehicle was registered to his daughter's boyfriend. So what I did was I backed out a little bit and parked um, about a block away and I started doing a little bit of a neighborhood canvas. I kind of do this just so when I get to the subject residence where I'm going, if they happened to see me, um, they're not going to be, you know, afraid of what I was doing there. I didn't, don't want to park right in front of the house because I was going around with the guise of the fact that I was looking at um, a house for sale in the neighborhood and I wanted to kind of find out what the neighborhood was like. I also had to find a house for sale in the neighborhood, which isn't too terribly difficult. Um, so I did, and I was able to grab a little brochure, so I had one of those 
one of those papers in my hand about the residence. So I talked to a couple of neighbors as I was walking in there, and then I get there and I just knock on the door and I just use that guy and I say, hi, um, I'm looking at buying a house around the corner there and I kind of show them, show him the paper there. And I said, I'm just kind of talking with some of the neighbors, getting a feel for the neighborhood and stuff, see if it's a quiet place, if it's a good place to be able to move in, you know, safe place when our grandkids come over, things like that. And then I just let the subject talk. And this gentleman had answered, and I was pretty sure that it was his, our, our subject's daughter's boyfriend. And he goes on to tell me that it is a good neighborhood. They've lived there for a couple of years. And I'm like, oh, okay, so have you lived here with your parents for a couple of years? And, uh, of course, then he's like, oh, no, no, um, I own the house here. It's me and my girlfriend and our kids. And uh, so then I let him talk about his kids and everything. I'm, oh, okay, so it's just you guys. So it's it's pretty quiet. There's not, like, a lot of parties going on. I mean, people probably get together on the weekend. You probably get together on the weekend with family and stuff. And, and uh, you know, try to see if, if there's times that our subject may be coming over on the weekends and stuff. But I didn't get the feeling that he comes over a lot. But I do um, believe that they probably know where he's at. <laughs> he's probably in the area. Now, here in Colorado, when you have a summons, if it's a Colorado court, you can serve that summons on a family member, a relative that is 18 years of age or older at the residence of the subject. So this isn't the subject's residence, we don't believe. However, this isn't Colorado documents either. The state that we are serving papers out of, I believe would allow us to serve a family member over the age of 18 that we believe has knowledge of where the subject is if we've done due diligence. Now, I always leave this up to the client or the client's attorney as to whether we do something like that. And that is definitely an option. We may be able to serve his daughter there. But what we'd probably do is have an investigator stop by, maybe a female investigator, and talk with her, kind of try to put some pressure on her if needed to try to see if she would give up his location, give us an address. But we have another address to check on him, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that. But that was actually some good information that we got there. So um, we do know that his daughter is still living in the area with her boyfriend, and uh, we know where they live. So gives us one more lead to the case. So I am actually, gosh, this next one is way out in the middle of the country. Um, and I don't like going to those, but kind of got to do what you got to do, you know. And so I'm heading out there. I'm probably about 30, 35 minutes away. So when I get close to this one, I will uh, let you know, okay? Okay, while I'm driving out here, I thought of something I might share with you a little bit about what my company's do with these types of cases. So we basically offer a lot of different services and these types we offer skip traces, we offer confirmed skip traces, and we offer locate investigations. And a skip trace for us, this is what it means for us, and I know it may mean different things for different people, but a skip trace for us means we will run somebody through all of our different databases that we have access to and we will analyze all of the data that we get back from those databases and then we try to identify the best potential possible address for the subject. It's fairly routine, we do a lot of those and usually those are going to be good. A lot of times those are gonna be involved in basic process serves and stuff like that if somebody doesn't have an address and then we go out and we will attempt to serve the person at that location. Um, we also do what we call a confirmed skip trace. A confirmed skip trace, and we have one of those cases with us right now. A confirmed skip trace means we're going to go out and we're going to we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run them through all of our data sets, and then we're going to go out and we're going to try to confirm that that is a good address before we attempt service. So a lot of times that's going to be done if we believe, you know, we might. Um, compromise the integrity of the investigation or something like that if we just go out and start door knocking with a process server or something. We don't want to scare the individual away. And um, 
so that that's another product or service that we offer and then there's locate investigations and a locate investigation is one and we've got one of those with us as well today a locate investigation is actually where we are boots on the ground knocking on doors sort of like a confirmed skip but it's usually going to be tied to um, another investigation and one of the things that we have we need to identify the residents for a subject of an insurance claim case that we got in and if we get that then of course we're going to set up and do surveillance on the subject as well but I just thought you might want to know some of the services that we offer and it's not always just one thing and it's good to have those additional ones because if somebody calls and they ask you to do a service and process and you go out and you got a bad address now what are you going to do well you can offer them um, a skip trace and if they're interested then you can also talk to them about a confirmed skip trace or if you're not able to find them through the skip trace you're going to do the locate investigation and the locate investigation does consist of a lot more than running them through the databases as well there could be a lot of pretext phone calls to relatives you know we're going to pull vehicles we're going to pull lots more data on somebody besides just running them in the database because we're trying to actually conduct an investigation and those are usually going to be in the range of four to eight hours just to conduct the locate investigation so um, I am still about um, 10, 10 15 minutes out so I will let you know when we get on scene for this one well folks we are approaching this residence and it is quite a ways off the road here so it's going to be a little difficult it's probably a quarter of a mile off the road i just need to verify up yep, there's the mailbox this is definitely the residence and there's multiple vehicles down there um i can't of course make out any license plates as far away as they are i don't even think i could with binoculars one of the things i do sometimes with these I'm going to flip a U here, but there is a oil rig set up, not a rig, but, you know, with the tanks and everything like that, where they are pumping oil and gas out of, and it's along the side of that driveway. So I'm actually going to um, turn around here, and then I'm going to pull into that spot alongside that driveway, and I'm going to see if I can get a better shot at those vehicles and see if I can't get any video of them or anything to see if I can confirm if one of them is um, associated with our subject. Um, this is just one of those difficult things that occurs when you come out here to the country and you try to get these. So I'll let you know what happens here in just a minute. I'm going to pull down this driveway, okay? Okay, so I am here next to one of these um, gas pump and oil pump setups here, and I have a pretty good shot of the vehicles, and I could make out one of the license plates on the truck, and it's not ours, but our subjects, but there is a trailer there that has um, what appears to be the name of one of the companies that he was running. So I believe we have a potentially good address where, where he may be living out here. So um, I'm going to have to get with the client and see what they want to do. But of course our suggestion is going to be that we set up surveillance out here as far away as we are. We're definitely going to have to use two investigators. We would set up surveillance, watch all the vehicles that come and go, try to find one that identifies to our subject or try to identify him in one of them and then follow him if he's driving into one of the local towns or something like that versus just going out and trying to serve him. There's a lot of uh, pickups out there and there's actually a, appears to be multiple residences there and we run into that a lot with some of these rural ones where there will be a main address and then like this one there's an older house and then it looks like possibly a couple of uh, mobile homes, manufactured homes there, and even a couple of RVs, so there's a lot of people potentially living out there, and he may be one of those people living in one of the other um, places, not necessarily the main residence. And I had one just not too long ago, way out here, and I'm, I'm 
where I'm talking seriously, we are way out here in the boondocks. We are not too far from the Wyoming border, actually. And I had one not too long ago where we come out on one like this, and I actually had another process server investigator with me on that one, and I usually do when I go out on these to do serves. I will have two people out in the country once. Um, and I rolled around to this residence, and I see a vehicle associated with the person that we're going to serve, and uh, there's no, no cell phone service out here, just so you're aware of that. Um, there's no cell phone service. There is no lifeline to call if um, something occurs while you're out here. And I pull around towards the back. Most of these farmhouses, people do not use the front door. They use the back door. I pull around back, and there's a back porch. And sure enough, I see three guys sitting up there on the chairs. And, you know, um, the banjo's going. I don't want to don't want to get copyright stricken on that, so I'm not going to do the exact song. But, you know, I'm starting to wonder, well, what the heck's going on? I pull up, and I get out of my car, and uh, I am just like, hey, how's everybody doing? I'm just going to be, you know, like one of the good old boys talking to them. And they all stand up, and I get to noticing next to every one of them on their chair, or next to their chair that they're sitting in, is a long rifle. And every one of them, I am not kidding you, had a pistol strapped to their side. Um, this is open carry country out here. And while you don't see it all the time in the city, you see it a lot out in the country. And uh, as I'm walking up, then I look over and I see a couple other guys coming over from one of the corrals on horseback. And they have guns on their side. So I'm starting to get just a wee bit nervous about everything, you know. Just wondering what's going on. I was able to successfully get that serve done. Nobody gave me any problems, but it just gives you a real uneasy feeling because you know that they know that there's no cell phone service out there. And you know that they know that they definitely have you outnumbered. And you know that they know that there's plenty of places to uh, bury a body should they choose to do so. Um, but generally there's never any issues, but I'm always a little cautious about that. So when we come out and do surveillance on this one, I'm definitely going to have two investigators. I'm probably not going to be one of them. I could be, but I'll probably um, subcontract that out to some younger folks that are going to be a little more suited for something like this because it could end up being kind of a wild chase. So anyway, we are heading back into town now and we're going to go on another one. We're actually looking for a young lady to get her some paper served. So I will let you know about that one when I get on scene, okay? Okay, as I'm driving back into town, I am reminded of a very funny incident that happened to me uh, many, many, many years ago. And for those uh, viewers that drop off early, I guess you just won't get to hear some of the funny stories about about the PI guy here. So that last place that we were at out way out in the country wasn't very far away from a farm that I used to live on. Yep, if you can imagine it, the PI guy living on a farm, I was a farmer. Well, I was sort of a farmer. <laughs> wasn't really a farmer. Um, I worked in retail and I worked in radio. Yep, I was a rock and roll radio DJ back in the day. Um, and it kind of reminded me of that because not too long ago, Howard Hessman, Dr. Johnny Fever from WKRP passed away and uh, kind of reminded me of that and the fact that I drove right past where, where we used to live out there. And that was before I had children um, or anything and we lived out on that little farm. And one of the things that I did was I helped the owner of the farm with um, the farm taking care of the cattle and stuff from time to time as a um, reduction in my rent out there. And again, I didn't know a whole lot about farming. And we had, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 head of cattle that we had to take care of. And I mostly just helped out when he was out of town. He'd go hunting a couple times a year up in the mountains. And that's when I went to help out and take care of the cattle. And one year there was this calf that had been born in the spring, as they normally are. And this calf only had three legs. He was missing a leg. And this calf, um, he could get along okay, but he did a lot of walking around in circles to get from point A to point B. He had to go through C, D, F, and G, and Z to get there. And the 
farmer had gone off hunting, he was elk hunting up in the uh, mountains, and left me in charge, and all the cattle were out in the uh, pasture, and I had to get them in to get them fed, and I had to get them in to get secured because we had a big, big uh, blizzard coming. And what we did was we had the old M International tractor, and it had a bucket on it, and we always had some carrots, and I would fill that bucket up with carrots, and I'd go out there, and I would just sprinkle some of the carrots along and make a path, and lead the cows all back in to the pans, and uh, then I could scare them in there, and they'd be safe. They had, uh, had, had cover there to get into. And I got all the cows going in there, and this one calf, he just, he just wouldn't go. I don't know stubborn about it and again I didn't know a whole lot about cows back then and I still don't know a whole lot about cows <laughs> um, I'm trying to get this guy going and I'm trying to get this guy going and uh, he just he just as stubborn as, as you can be and so I parked the tractor and I'm telling my wife I just got to go out there and I am so thankful that way back then there was not such a thing as cell phones with um, video cameras. In fact, it wasn't just a thing as cell phones back then. Um, there, there was mobile phones, but they're nothing like what we have today. Anyway, so I walk out there, and I've got a bucket of carrots with me, and I'm like, I'm going to get this guy in, because I've been watching this calf all these months, and, you know, I kind of feel for him, and I know he's going to have a tough time. And I get out there, and I'm trying to get him in, and, uh, and he starts to charge me <laughs> and I'm like well you silly you silly little cow and uh, you know I push his head back and stuff and he starts to get a little tougher now he's about eight nine months old so he's not a little bitty baby and he starts chasing me and I'm out there in this field and it is really starting to snow a lot we've already got um, a couple of inches of snow and we're supposed to get you know nearly two foot of snow and the winds are picking up and it's about 10 15 degrees out there and it's just a real bad situation I spent an hour hour and a half out there getting chased around in circles by this three-legged cow that would not come in I finally got him a little bit closer by some trees and that's just all I could do I mean I was I was gonna end up dead out there if I stayed out there so I ended up going in and unfortunately it wasn't a good outcome for the calf but it was one of the funniest stories of my life, one of the funniest things that ever happened, and it was a lesson for the PI guy to, um, yeah, well, not become a cattle farmer. So I just thought I'd share that with you. And we are probably about 10 minutes out from our next um, stop here. So when I get there, I will let you know, okay? Okay, folks, well, that was, uh, that was a good one there. Um, I had uh, come by this residence a little bit ago and there wasn't any vehicles here and then I drove over on that locate investigation that we had. Um, I just drove past that. I did see one vehicle that's associated with the subject's wife. So we know that he's there. I can let the client know that we can do surveillance and we will get that set up. I, um, he has multiple vehicles registered to him and his wife. One was there that we believe the wife drives and uh, the vehicle that we believe he drives was not there. So we'll be able to set that up. He's probably working somewhere or whatever. We'll have to figure that out on that one. On this one, we we're looking for a young lady that we needed to serve a summons to on a um, small claims matter here. Um, when I first drove by, there wasn't any vehicles, but this time after I come by there was a vehicle in the driveway and the front door was open the screen door was closed but I could see the front door was open and I saw what I believed was one of her children standing inside um, I do have photos of her and her children so I walked up just to confirm um, and lo and behold she was there so I got to serve taken care of gave her the documents and you know, she was quite pleasant about it, and uh, that's what happens in most cases. So then I got it set up in my system and everything. So now I'm done for the day, or well, at least I'm done for the day on this run. I have to go back. I have to write up reports, write up affidavits, get a hold of clients. We actually have another one that I'm probably going to have to go out on. Way back to that town that we were at, it is a same-day rush serve on another matter so i'm gonna have to go back out there um, but i gotta go home and send the invoice to that client print the documents get it all ready 
and head out. But that's going to do it for this one. I want to thank you for um, viewing my videos. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you would like membership information to see how you can support the channel more, go down below, click that join button, and you can get information on the membership program as well. Um, while you're down there, go ahead and hit that thumbs up if uh, you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't subscribed, by all means, please um, subscribe. It's free. You can always unsubscribe if you want. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to spam you with all kinds of things. But I will um, be able to get, um, you will be able to get notifications when I do put out videos if you are subscribed to the channel. And I will see you next time. Thanks.